guys, so I'm going to do a quick video to show you how to make your own bias binding. Um, so what you're going to need is you're going to need the colour of your fabric, you're going to need your chalk, your pattern weight, uh, your pattern master or your metre stick, a pair of scissors, your iron and ironing board and your sewing machine threaded up on the same colour as your fabric. You're also going to need your uh, bias binding makers. Now these come in all different sizes so make sure that when you cut your strips of um, your fabric they're going to be able to fit into these and fold over on the inside as well. So I've gone for this size, I'm not sure what size actually is, they don't really say the numbers on them. So I've just cut, I'm going to cut a strip of an inch wide and I've checked and they fold over onto the inside as well. So when it comes to your fabric you're going to mark out an inch on each side um, and then you're just going to draw a nice straight line. So you want to get your pattern master or your metre stick, line it up with the other lines that you've done and you just want to draw a straight line with your chalk, like so. Um, it doesn't, on this one, I did a mistake and I went a bit too thin here. Um, that doesn't matter because what happens is, is when you iron it, your fabric is going to fold onto the inside as well, so that bit will be on the inside. Okay. I'm just going to do that many first, so you're not sort of sat here for like hours on end watching how to make by spiding. So I'll do two strips and then I'll show you how to put them together and iron them. So you just want to cut down your line that you've just drawn. Like so. If you um, cut your strips on the fold, don't forget that you're going to end up with two strips rather than one. So if I finish cutting this one, you can see that it looks like I've only got two strips of fabric, when in fact, it's like magic, I have four. Okay, then what you want to do is just with these ends that are completely straight, you just want to cut them diagonally, like that. That one's already diagonal. And so is that one and that one. It's just that one. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to match the right side of your uh, vice binding together. And it looks odd, but you want to do it diagonally, like so. So then when they're sewn together, they will come out in a straight line like that. So you just grab your pins and you just want to diagonally put them two together. And then pin. If I can pin, there we go. And then you do the same with this end. So diagonally and then pin. It looks really odd that you have to put them diagonally but once if you look that I've pinned those together once you then pull it out straight they're flattened into a straight line so I've lost a strip oh I haven't <laughs> I just can't count and then one more which should be cut diagonally the other way there we go and then pin Today. Okay, once we have pinned them, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the sewing machine and you're just going to sew up those three bits that you've pinned together. Let's go. So I have a view of my back. Okay, so you just want to get a bit that you've pinned together and put it under your sewing machine. Actually, I'm going to show you first. You've got, is that in the camera? You've got like a corner here and a corner here where your fabric meets together. That's where you want to put your sewing machine and that's where you want to sew across. So you want to sew from where it meets there to where it meets at this end. Can't really see that because it's pinned and the head's in the way. But where it meets to there. So that's the line you're going to sew. Okay, so you start there. Take pin out. And then just let this 
ended up with our straight line and then we're going to do the same on the other one so again from where your fabric meets to where it ends is where you want to sew so there take your pin out start off don't forget your back stitch your back stitch is a very important when it comes to doing your vice binding take that out and then we'll do our last strip so again, where your fabric meets to where your fabric ends. got a thick fabric like a, I have and it doesn't seem to want to move just give it a little bit of guidance give it a little bit of pulling and it'll come along okay and then cut all your excess threads off because you don't really want them showing in your vice binding so you just cut all of them off if you've done more than three strips like I will do when I make this dress you'll be here for ages trying to find where all your seams are okay so now we have got all this excess fabric from where your stitch line is to the edge of your fabric you just want to trim them down so that there's not so much fabric that's going to be left on the inside of your vice binding let me just trim those corners off do the same with these ones. You don't want to take too much fabric off because then you're going to lose your seam and you might end up cutting into your stitch line. So you just want to cut off a little bit so that you're still able to press them open. Um, especially with fluffy ones like this. You need to move, get them out. So just cut them. Cut those corners off. You can see. Okay. And then this is when you're going to need your iron. Now when going over to your iron, make sure you bring a pin with you. I'll explain it in a minute. But maybe bring two, just in case. Right, let's go. Okay, so when over at the iron, you need your vice binding maker and your two pins. But first we're going to start off with ironing these out flat. So you just want to lay your vice binding there. And you've got your two seams here where they meet. You just want to, this is why it's good to have long nails sometimes. You just want to open them up as best as you can. And without burning your fingers, press that flat. So, press it that way. And then you want to press it from the right side as well. So that you know that they're going to be flat. Like so. And then you do that on all your seams. So open them up, press them flat, turn it over, press it flat that way, and then last one, open them up, press them flat. over and then you want to press it flat in this way make sure that all your seams are flat on the outside as well there you go okay so when starting to make your vice binding you want to get the edge of your vice binding and you want to slot it in with your fabric sort of facing the metal bit on the inside now this is where it's going to get tricky and you're going to need your pin so you slot that in 
and there's only so far that you can get your finger into it so you want to sort of get it as far as it'll go with your finger sometimes you can get it all the way through and then other times it's easier to sort of just drag it through with your pin and as you can see it comes out the other end and I don't know whether you can actually see that but it sort of starts to fold in on itself so you want to oh, I've just pulled it out what it <laughs> That's another thing you need to be careful of when trying to line your vice binding up ready to press it. You do need to be careful that you're not going to pull it out. <laughs> so you just want to pull that back through when it wants to. Come on. Gotcha. Okay, and then just pull it out a little bit so you can start it off. Okay. So gently now putting it around this way, keeping those pins there. You want to start by pressing it off this way with your you being able to see your right sides. So if you just start by pressing it this way. If you've got an iron like uh, I have it's really good because you can just sort of press the button and leave it to steam itself so once you've done your first I'd say two centimeters I would then flip my vice binder maker over and I would pin it down to my ironing board so that when I move along that bit's not going to move that bit's going to stay where it's meant to be I would then get my iron again and just go over the top of my bias binding. Now this way, when you make your bias binding, your bias binding, well, the bits that are uh, being ironed onto the inside aren't going to pop up because you're ironing them the wrong way. So whenever you do something with an iron, um, it always seems the heat drops out and then your bits on the inside pop up again. So when you get near to the end of your ironing board, you just want to stop ironing take that pin out and just move it along and do the same here making sure that that's flat like so oh not getting caught under your iron there we go and then you might want to pull it forward again just to make sure that you're getting it in the same place there we go It will be a bit stiff where your seam is, so you just want to sort of give it a good old tug and a pull. You can also um, guide where your bias binding is going in by just, you know, arranging it where it needs to go. So you just keep ironing, like so. Until you get all the way the end of your bias binding. If um, your child is doing this and obviously you're using a lot of steam, um, I would watch out for your fingers. I've done quite a few times where I've nearly burnt my fingers off by trying to make bias binding because your fingers are so close to the iron. So just watch out for your kids' fingers. Okay, so I've come to the end of my ironing board. Bring it all the way back up here, like so, if it wants to, maybe move the iron, like that, and then burn my arm. Pin that down, push your bias spine and make it back up a little bit and then go straight back in with the ironing. And you just sort of keep going. If you think your bias binding is starting to get a little bit big compared to other places, just push your binding maker back up and just go over that little bit again but it should all come out the same length. 
uh, same width, sorry, not the same length. And over that seam, just pull it a little bit more, give it a little bit more of a tug so that you know it's going to fold over as well as all the other places. It's so satisfying making your vice binding though as well because you're like, when you get to the end of it and you're like, oh, I made my own vice binding, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I've got the last little bit to go. I'm gonna just pull that up, take that pin out, try not to burn my arm like I have done before. And then pin that down. You can either pin it to your ironing board so that the pin comes out on the other side or you can literally just sort of shove your pin in downward like that. I would recommend doing it that way because that comes out quite easily. And then push that forward a little bit. And then over we go again. end of my vice binding so I just go over that end a little bit okay and there we go so there is my vice binding towards this end is a lot better than at the beginning I think my iron was a little bit cold at the beginning whereas this end it's obviously warmed up a lot more and um, so make sure your iron obviously is hot enough and um, if your vice binding comes out sort of not fully ironed you can put it back through the vice binding maker but you've still come out with those um, ironed lines where obviously you would sew down that one, fold that in and then fold that over your fabric. So either way, you've come out with your vice binding but obviously that end is a lot neater. So definitely make sure your iron is hot enough. If you have any more questions, feel free to inbox me on Facebook or on Instagram or comment below on this video. Thanks for watching guys.